Hey there, welcome to the Uxlap channel and welcome to this tutorial video. For the play along videos of We're Going to the Reindeer Games, which is a 2023 release of Super Simple Songs, a website for kids. This is a great song and I think if you play it through you're going to like it and I hope it actually breaks out beyond where it's at. Uh, if there's anything, there's a part in the middle where each of the reindeer's names is called out and I think it's fine. But for like radio use, I think that could be trimmed out or something. But nonetheless, I think it's a really great song. It, it feels um, like in the vein of Christmas, you know, tradition. Also fits in Rudolph with the Reindeer Games whole part. So even if you haven't heard it, I hope you enjoy it as much as I have this year. So what we're going to do in this video is we'll look at the chords you need for soprano concert tenor GCEA ukulele. And then we'll look at the chords you need for baritone DGBE ukulele, and then we'll talk about strumming. I do want to remind you that if you want to see the chord chart for this song, you can find the chords or tabs for it at my website at uxtuff.info. And if you want to support the work on this channel, there are three things you can do. First of all, you can like the video. Secondly, you can subscribe to the channel. And third, you can always buy me a cup of coffee to say thank you for making this content at www.buymeacoffee.com slash uxtuff. All right, let's begin with the chords you need for soprano, concert, or tenor ukulele for We're Going to the Reindeer Games. All right, the first chord you need is the E7 chord. I really like this chord. It feels good to play. What I do is instead of coming across horizontally, I rotate my wrist up a little bit. First finger goes on the four string first fret and my other two fingers go down as if I'm going to be playing the G chord with fingers two and three, which I'm not, but that's what it is. That's the E7. Then a D chord, however you want to play it. I almost always play it with my first finger at the top of the third string second fret and my other two fingers around it. It's a quick change from E7, as well as a quick change to A, which is really important in this song as well. So um, if you haven't tried D that way, I would give it a shot. Now, if you want to play D any of the other ways, please feel free to do so. One, two, three in a row, two, three, four in a row, two fingers, one finger, whatever works for you, just don't play it with your thumb. Then you'll need that A chord, a D7 chord, and a B7 chord. Now, while you can play B7 as a bar chord, you don't need to on this one, put your first finger on the second string, second fret, second finger on the third string, third fret, and the ring finger, the fourth finger, on the fourth string, fourth fret. That's your B7 chord. And those are the five chords you need to play. We're going to the Reindeer Games on soprano, concert, or tenor ukulele. Now let's talk about baritone ukulele. For baritone ukulele, you'll start with the E7 chord, then a D chord, then an A chord. Now, now I am leaving my first finger at the top of the third string, second fret, and my other two fingers around it, but you can play A however you play it. Then you'll need a D7 chord, and then a B7 chord. The B7 chord is one of my favorite shapes to play. Instead of coming across the ukulele, I rotate my wrist out a little bit, put my first finger on the fourth string first fret, and my other two fingers down. That's the B7 chord. And those are the five chords you need to play. We're going to the Reindeer Games on baritone DGBE ukulele. Now let's talk about strumming. Now as we get to strumming, there was no original ukulele in the original song, so there's not one right answer. So please, if you hear something else, play that. And if you're a person that needs a strumming pattern, I'll give you some ideas here, but please know that there are three rules with strumming. First of all, you need to play the right chords. Second, you need to play the right chords at the right time in the right tempo. And third, whatever you play needs to match the style of the song. So no matter what you do, as long as you meet those criteria, you're right, there is not one single right answer. Now, if you're playing with a group and everybody decides that you're gonna play one particular thing, like a teacher that would use these videos, these play along videos with their class, and they say, hey, we're all gonna strum this way, that's fine. But that's you know making so the group sounds good together. If you're just playing along at home and want to just learn how to play the song, play what works for you. That's really, really important. So let's begin here, and I'm gonna give you just a simple idea and a not much harder idea of what you can do. The first one, of course, is you can always just play a single strum whenever you need to change the chord, right? You can do that. 
Some people have asked why we don't show the chords like over a timeline. And there are some people, uh, Little Kids Rock here in the United States is an uh, organization and the, the people that involve themselves writing songs like they do, do show you chord changes over time. This approach allows you to focus on the words on the screen and on the chords with minimal sort of like overload. So you're not having to worry about reading music or reading the context of time and you're training your ears. So it does have some different benefits if you've ever wondered why we do that. Um, nothing wrong with either approach, it's just a different approach. And um, this is much more like musicians would be thinking, oh, when's the next chord coming? They might also see a chord chart, which of course you can download at my website at ukestuff.info for free if you're interested as well. So with all that said, you can just play those single chords, right? You can also hear that there's just the piano hammer away through the whole thing, kind of just going. And that would work too. Um, I think that gets a little sort of overwhelming at times, just heavy down strums. But if that works, it works. And it does match with what the piano is actually doing in the song. Now, what I hear is a shuffle swing, so uh, or a shuffle sort of pattern going. Because it does sort of have a blues progression in it um, as a song as a whole. It's not a blues song, but it does sort of have that bluesy progression. Uh, so again, down, 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 down. doing here is I'm missing the up of the first beat or the second half of the first beat. So I'm going down, down, up, down, up, down, up. I'm not playing the first up. And the other thing I'm doing again is I'm not just going, I'm not just going, I'm not going straight eighth notes, bop, 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 bop. It swung, da, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba. And that's what swung means or a shuffle step. What if you hear something else? What if you want to put in something fancy like a chuck or whatever? Please do. There's not one right answer. But any one of those options, just a single strum on the beat would work as well as that shuffle strum where it's down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down would work very well too. So with those chords, with that strumming, that's all you need to do to be successful on We're Going to the Reindeer Games. I hope you enjoy the song as much as I do. I think it really has a potential if it goes beyond just being a kid's song. Um, I mean, so is Ray Rudolph, right? Rudolph was originally just a kid's song. Maybe this will find legs and uh, playability on the radar. That'd be great for the company. Uh, they deserve it. So, all right. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great Christmas season. And I'll be back soon with some more Uke stuff for you.